welcome, y'all. Give it up. So this season, we have been asking local news reporters to share their most moving stories of people making a difference in their communities. It's my favorite segment, y'all. It's all part of our search for a good neighbor of the year. I'm Jesse, and it's you, uh, the viewers, who are going to ultimately choose your favorite. Um, today, we are heading to the city of Detroit, where one organization is making sure no one in Motor City is going hungry. And joining us is WXYZ7 Action News anchor Carolyn Clifford from our Detroit partner, along with the interim CEO of Forgotten Harvest, Lorna, and the founder Nancy. Y'all, give it up for him. So, welcome to the show, y'all. Meet Craig. Thank you. Everybody, say hi. So, Carolyn, I have to ask you, like, what stands out to you about Forgotten Harvest? Oh, my goodness. Forgotten Harvest is such a wonderful, wonderful nonprofit in our community. I think last year mm -hmm. they fed one million people in our community. That's a lot, a lot of people. And, you know, yeah. when you think about the city of Detroit and the metro Detroit area, there's a lot of poverty going on. I think one in five families is food insecure, meaning they can't put dinner on the table at times. I was born and raised in the city of Detroit, the youngest of nine kids. I don't, I don't even know how my mom fed all of us, and she would never turn anyone away if they came to our door for food. She'd put a big pot of spaghetti on the stove or a big pot of chicken noodles on the stove and yeah. that sort of thing. But they rescued like 42 million pounds of food last year, meaning, yes. <laughs> Rescue, meaning it didn't go to waste. Right. Meaning they went to grocery stores and restaurants and got the food that would have gone in the trash and brought it back to our community. And I'm just so grateful to work for a station like Channel 7 and a company like Scripps that really cares about community yeah. service oh, and amazing. giving back. I mean, I've been in the community covering Forgotten Harvest. I've been at their food drives. And especially during the pandemic, I saw lines around the block and people would literally, literally cry when they'd get that free box of food because it means so much. So I just thank God that we have them in our community and making such a difference. And we just play a small part. Man, it's cool too, like what you said too, and not letting things go to waste. There's so much waste that could help people. That's incredible that y'all found a way to accomplish both things. So Nancy, you came up with this after experiencing your own food insecurity, right? I did. Yeah. I was a young mother, divorced. I had a baby, two years old, hmm. and I had not finished my education, and I was struggling to feed us, and it was a very uh, painful, humiliating, and frightening experience standing in line mm -hmm. waiting for food assistance. And at that moment, I thought to myself, if I ever got out of that situation, someday I would go back and help the other people yeah. who I was standing in line with. And then years later, when I had more than two pair of shoes in my closet, and I was raising three children, it was time to fulfill the promise to myself. And so I started going around to restaurants and caterings and putting food in my Jeep and driving it to soup kitchens and shelters. And about a year and a half later, I was given anonymously a refrigerated van to augment my work. And that was the birth of Forgotten Harvest. I brought a board of directors together and started setting goals. Yeah. And I'd hoped to put a thousand meals a month on the tables of people in need. Hmm. And we achieved that goal in six months. And then the organization just started to grow. And then this incredible thing happened. We decided to have a fundraiser. And we decided to do a comedy night. And we asked an up-and-coming comedian who had a brand new TV show if he would maybe, he was from Detroit, maybe he would do this comedy night for us. Yeah. Who was it? Tim Allen. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and my so gosh. He raised enough money to... Um, to buy a second truck the next year, he did it again, and we had a third truck, and then it just started to roll from there. And we oh. went from that, those beginnings to now just, you know, covering three counties and feeding 750, thousand people and that has to feel incredibly rewarding since you were one of those people at one point like I felt my family um actually there were times when we were young and we didn't have anything so I I totally get that did you ever grow up around anybody Craig that food insecurity issues or anything like that yeah I know a few people for sure yeah, yeah. it's sad because it's one of those things where it's like this should not be the discussion right there's plenty to go around so it's incredible that even 
the foresight to like go, man, there's so much waste here with these catering companies, with these restaurants, and to gather that and just do it on your own at first and look what it's become. That's incredible. It is. Like, yeah. what amazing footprints. What a legacy to leave behind. It's an incredible thing you're doing. I just want to applaud you. Yay! Yeah. So, Lorna, explain more about how Forgotten Harvest works. How does it play out? Well, from the time uh, food is harvested to gets to your refrigerator, 40% of that food is wasted. Mm -hmm. And so that's like 70 billion pounds a year in this country that yes. goes to waste. So... Which we are all guilty of. Yes, yeah. we certainly are. Yeah. So Forgotten Harvest, my amazing team in Detroit, collects that food, brings it back to the warehouse, repacks it and gets it to our pantry partners and our mobile pantry units, all for free. Hmm. We have 50 trucks um, covering the three county area of Metro Detroit. We also have a farm. We um, harvest on a... 100 acre farm. That's incredible. Yep, potatoes, mm -hmm. uh, tomatoes, um, collard greens, sweet yeah. corn, mm -hmm. um, and much, much more. And, and our food is all fresh. Right. It's the right. fresh, nutritious food that people need so that right. they stay healthy. And, and mentally healthy. Yeah. Absolutely. And kids can thrive in school. It's not boxed in canned goods yeah. mm -hmm. like you see in a food bank. This is not a food bank, it's fresh food. Yeah. Yeah. It's food rescue. Food rescue. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference in people's lives. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. stats prove that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, some kids, even in the Detroit area, right, they only go home eating lunch. Right. That's right. And if not we for send Forgotten things, Harvest, right? they wouldn't have food. Yeah. We send things home with them as well. In the last 30 years, Forgotten Harvest has distributed more than 35 million meals to those in need in Detroit. Incredible. Not long ago, they opened a huge distribution center, and we have Carolyn's colleague, WXYZ7 Action News reporter, Simon Shaquette, there right now. Hi, Simon. How you doing? Good, Ta Kelly. Great to see you. And what an amazing place this is. Truly a labor of love. You can see these hardworking volunteers filling these boxes for families. This is a 78,000 square foot facility, 20,000 volunteers since 2021, and they are packaging up, processing 178,000 pounds of food on a daily basis. And I am so excited to introduce you to Krista and Damari and Derek, her children. And Krista, this is near and dear to your heart. Yes. Talk to me about how you first got started with Forgotten Harvest. Absolutely. So 15 years ago, I lost my job. I was working in the mortgage industry. And, um, you know, I found myself in a situation where, you know, when you're in poverty and you're deep down in it, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, at the time, I had an uncle that was a driver for Forgotten Harvest, and he told me about one of our agencies that we partner with. And initially, when I found out about the organization, I wanted to just volunteer. Um, it wasn't until I started going to those agencies that I was just thrilled at the type and the quality of food that I was able to receive. And now as a client service manager, what does this place mean to you aside from the food? So I found Forgotten Harvest because I needed food, but what I found was a family. I am now the client services manager, and now I have a chance to help all the other Kristas out here that's in need of help. And I want, I want to ask Damari, too, now being a part of an organization, giving back after receiving the help, what does that mean to you? It means a lot. Forgotten Harvest did so much for me and my family, especially when I was younger and we was in poverty. And because of that, I love volunteering and giving back to the community. I remember volunteering at a farm, picking, picking green beans and packing them. And it just feels good to help people in need. And there's so much work to be done. What about you? What is the most fun part of being involved in this? Picking apples at the apple orchard. That is, that is fun. Yeah. And, and, and Krista, uh, one other thing I want to ask you. Uh, talk to us uh, about Nancy. There's something that you'd like to share, a very important message. So, Nancy, you are so special to me. First of all, I love you. Um, you were deep down in it, and I know how that feels, but you had the the mental capacity and the awareness to come and, and, and help those people that you once stood in line with. Um, you in Forgotten Harvest, you all saved my lives, and I know that you are saving the lives of so many in the community, and I just want to say a great big thank you, Nancy. You are amazing, and I love you. Kelly? Oh, my gosh. I know, I'm like, I'm trying. You are smart. You brought a tissue. Um, volunteers are such a vital part of many community initiatives. 
Um, how, how much is that? Like doing this whole, I just saw, look at that right. place. That's filled with we volunteers. Like, it. And, and I think what, what's, in, what's important though is we were talking about this too before in the commercial break, like it's so important to get this message out like that people want to help, they just don't know how. And that's, not, that's my yes. favorite segment that we're doing because we're, we're crossing all over the country. Like everybody can find their own spot, their own like place where they can, they can help out. So if people aren't near you, how can they help? Is there like a website? Like how, how can they donate? They can or? donate for gottenharvest.org. It's mm -hmm. very simple. Yeah. And we appreciate all the donations financially because the food Absolutely. is freed, but moving it around and getting it <laughs> to the right places is not. So yeah. we need the support from anyone that is willing to give. Well, it's incredible that this idea came from you. Now this whole like village and this community like backing this whole place. That's an, well, that's an incredibly cool thing it that is you do. It is the community, started. really. The community has come together under the umbrella of Forgotten Harvest. It's schools and corporations and civic organizations and individuals and we all come together. It's, it's not any one person. Every, every single person makes a difference. And as a whole community, we are really getting the job done. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, we reached out to our friends at ConAgra, a Feeding America leadership partner. They're so impressed with the millions and millions of meals that you've provided across Detroit. So they're donating $10,000 to Forgotten Harvest. Oh, Like it's oh, it's so you. cool what y'all are doing for your community. It's so important that you're highlighting it. Yes. It's so important that we're highlighting people like this. Thank y'all so much.